Israel will, if they, as a last resort, attack to prevent a nuclear armed Iran. We will come to their aid. So here's what Iran needs to get ready for. Severe pain inside their country, that their capabilities pale in comparison to ours. Take the red pill. Senator Lindsey Graham says Israel will attack Iran and the U.S. will follow. So for those of you who were wondering about this false flag attack on the tanker and what it means to America, Israel, and Iran in war, I will tell you that this is probably what their follow-up plan is going to be. Since nobody was able was willing to buy the false flag attack on the tanker and it made Donald Trump look like such a buffoon uh, because he didn't get away with it I mean I don't know what were they thinking America and the world are so awake to their one trick pony act of creating false flag attacks to blame it on someone else so that they can have a pretense to go to war, a pretext to go to war, is everybody knows about this. I mean, what were they thinking? How did they think people were actually going to believe this? I guess they just miscalculated and now they see that their little trick isn't working, so they're going to go with plan B, and that is to have Israel uh, find some excuse to attack Iran uh, and claim that they were provoked so that then Israel can make the first move and then duck out and then of course America will go to war for Israel because we're quote unquote their allies this people is probably the most underhanded way to get us into World War 3 that I could have ever thought of um, this is just this is ridiculous we we need to stop this we really really do check out this this interview from Senator Lindsey Graham you're not going to believe this he, he sits here and he makes the case for Iran to be attacked by Israel and then he uses quotes of other fake news stories like the gas attacks with with uh, sarin gas in Syria and Assad as a way to back up his position. The guy is just disgusting. I, I, I watched it all the way through, but I'll tell you what, there are several times where I almost threw up. Okay, so there is another point of view on the attack on the tankers and the straight up removes with this whole Iranian tanker deal. Um, and I would be remiss not to mention this because there is another point of view. And I think that Pompeo even alluded to this, but I, I just got done searching through all the clips of Pompeo that I could find. And I couldn't find the exact footage where he alluded to this, but I remember seeing him alluding to it. And that is the possibility that Iran may actually have created this attack on purpose as to as as a way of creating like what you might call a reverse false flag so it's a possibility that maybe iran carried out this attack <clears throat> on the tanker in order to make it look like america carried out the attack to make it look like america was doing a false flag in order to raise tensions with now oh, i saw yeah. a clip and i can't remember where it is i tried i just got done searching for pompeo's speeches and i can't find the clip but he alluded to the possibility that Iran attacked the tanker <clears throat> in order to show that they can control what's going to happen in the Strait of Hormuz if we continue to uh, uh, hit them with sanctions but then these at the same time there's a possibility that it could be considered as a reverse false flag to make it look like America did the false flag in order to create an excuse to go to war with Iran and America may have actually understood that and hopped right on it anyway and used it as an excuse to go to war with Iran trying to use their own actions against them and kind of like a Sun Tzu kind of action thing there. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we would rem be remiss not to consider this point of view. I'm not saying that this is what happened or this is a even, 
logically what happened, but it is a possibility to consider. So we, we, we need to consider that in the conversation. Um, so in this interview with Adam Green, E. John Bolton details it. And he gives a little more information on his point of view of, of the current situation as well. So. And on top of that, my thinking on that is that maybe if that were the case, America sees that, understands the ramifications of Iran pulling a reverse false flag, but it sees the opportunity to take advantage of it and use it further against Iran as a good excuse to go to war with Iran. It's kind of like the whole Sun Tzu thing where, you know, you, you're, you're taught to use your enemy's actions against you to your against them to your own advantage. So, I mean, that's a possibility. And e. John Bolton alludes to this. He doesn't really allude. He kind of really details this uh, point of view in an interview with uh, Adam Green on No More News. So let's let's take a look at that uh, right now. Just now, with this in mind, just remember, I'm not saying that this is what actually happened, but this is a possible alternative that we do need to consider in this timeline in order to try to make sense out of it. So uh, let's let's get started with uh, the latest on Iran. Uh, a month ago, when there was the the last uh, tanker attacked, I saw you on Press D TV. You did a phenomenal job. I loved it. Uh, pulling no pun punches. What do you think of the latest uh, over the weekend? The latest attack on the Japanese ship. Yeah, the first time it happened, it was outside of the Gulf, and and uh, I I, th I thought it was a false flag attack, because I didn't think uh, Iran had any motivation in doing what it did. But uh, this time, this time I'm starting to wonder whether I Iran may be responsible for this. I think that it, Iran has been driven into a corner. Uh, the, the United States has been waging economic warfare on Iran for over over a year for a long time. OK, but uh, the new version came over a year ago when uh, Donald Trump uh, abrogated the uh, nuclear agreement. And since then, they've been stepping up the attack and they've driven Iran into a corner uh, by by, uh, first of all, uh, denying them the ability to sell oil. There was a year in which uh, the uh, Pompeo and his crowd at the State Department granted waivers, and now they're uh, they're denying waivers, and Iran is in a position where uh, it's it's a, a life-threatening situation, and the Supreme Leader has already said that if 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 we the Iranians can't sell oil uh, out of the Persian Gulf, then no one will be allowed to sell it, and so what I'm what I think we're seeing here is basically Iran showing what's going to happen if they continue. So they're starting off now with, uh, I think, their attacks on these tankers, not so much to sink them, not so much to kill anybody or anything like that, but just to show what they're capable of doing. This, These attacks also have the fundamental effect of driving up the price of oil. Uh, and that's going to happen whether they sink a ship or not. It's just the insurance companies are just going to start charging more for these tankers to get out of the Gulf. Uh, as the price goes up, uh, the Trump administration is going to find itself now under pressure. And I think that's the purpose of these attacks, because Donald Trump is now facing uh, re-election. And at this point, uh, he has already said that if, if he doesn't get re-elected, th that there will be a, the danger of recession. Well, I think what might happen here is that if if the oil stops flowing out of the Gulf, there will be a worldwide recession. I think this may be the goal of uh, Iranian policy. In 1979, uh, the Iranians uh, collaborated with George Bush, uh, who was the, uh, involved with a bunch of renegades from the CIA. It's it's a long story, but Jimmy Carter tried to clean up the CIA. Harry Truman, other presidents felt the CIA was completely out of control. Jimmy Carter tried to clean it up. He fired 2,000 uh, CIA agents, and they found uh, were mobilized by George W. Bush, who at this point, I think, realized that he could not get elected, but he was going to help Ronald Reagan get elected. And in order to do that, they paid the Ayatollah to basically prolong the hostage crisis. The lady who was involved in it said that they, the students who did it uh, were thinking it would last three days. Well, it lasted over a year because of George H.W. Uh, Bush. So I think that we, we see, uh, we're seeing a replay of the strategy. The, the strategy, I think, on the part of the Iranians 
is to basically deny Donald Trump a second term. They, they have nothing to lose. Their back is to the wall. Uh, and they'll do this by driving up the price of oil at, to the point where it gets to a certain point, And then that will uh, put the United States into a recession. And that will mean that Donald Trump will not be reelected. OK, so that's really all I have to add to this right now. I know it, the clips of me discussing the false the reverse false flag are a little bit messed together, but you get the idea. Um, it's just to give you an idea of my thought process on the whole situation with the mention of a reverse false flag by E. John Bolton. Um, all we can really do is watch and see how this plays out. I think we're going to end up going to war with Iran, unfortunately, because I think that Israel and America are hell-bent on taking down Iran. Um, you know, most of us who are in the know understand that America is Israel's proxy army now. Um, so, you know, just keep all this in mind as you watch this interview with Lindsey Graham. Uh, make sure that, you know, you don't try to cling to just one point of view in your analysis. Make sure to consider other options and, and give yourself a clear opportunity to analyze this from all angles is just what I'm trying to say. So all right now let's take a look at the interview from Lindsey Graham and then that's going to be pretty much the end of this video. So thanks for watching and remember the truth is out there waiting to be found. So uh, here's the deal. Uh, Trump's not the problem that I told is. This drone was in inner We've been flying patterns like this for months. We're trying to collect intelligence to make informed decisions. <clears throat> we had told the Iranians before they shot the drone down, that if you engage against American personnel or assets, you do so at your own peril. Uh, the president does not want a war with Iran or anybody else, <clears throat> but he is the commander in chief. And so when Abe <clears throat> was asked by the president, the prime minister of Japan, to deliver a message to the Iranians less talk, not only was he rebuffed, they attacked a Japanese ship while the Japanese prime minister is delivering a message from the American president, let's see if we can negotiate. So that tells me all I need to know about the Iranian regime and negotiating. So I talked to the president this morning, I'm gonna meet him this afternoon. Senator, Senator uh, what do you what, tweets that, that Iran what, made a big mistake? <clears throat> they made a big mistake by shooting our drone down. Is that provocative in and of itself to tweet that? No, out? what's provocative is to shoot the drone down. What's provocative is to blow up a Japanese oil tanker with a Japanese uh, prime minister in your office trying to start negotiations with the United States. What's provocative is having your uh, proxies shoot into Saudi Arabia. Trump's not the problem. So here's the way this is headed. If they start enrichment at the levels they're talking about in a few days, Israel over time will have to respond. There's one nation on the planet that's not going to give the Iranians a pass on their nuclear program, that's Israel. Israel will, if they, as a last resort, attack to prevent a nuclear armed Iran, we will come to their aid. Here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to break our will, intimidate us to come to the negotiating table. The president made an offer to negotiate. The response was to attack a Japanese tanker, the emissary of the person chosen to deliver the offer. And last night they shot down a drone. So here's what Iran needs to get ready for. Severe pain inside their country. That their capabilities pale in comparison to ours we're not going to let them disrupt navigation of the seas, attack our allies and U.S. interests without paying a price. So if they're itching for a fight, they're going to get one. How, how, how close are we to doing that? that? How, how close are we to doing that? that? We're a lot closer today than we were yesterday, and only God knows what tomorrow brings. If next week they go back into enrichment, putting them back on a path to a bomb, which they were on anyway, then that escalates the tension between Israel and Iran. If they do anything else against an American asset, and this president doesn't respond like Ronald Reagan, then that's a signal to North Korea and the entire world we're all talk. So Iran's fate is in their hands, and it's up to them to decide how this ends. But what does it look like when you say the U.S. will aid Israel? Help people understand what does that if mean? Israel, U.S. military involvement? A hundred percent. 
if they go back into the enrichment business that puts them on an accelerated path to a bomb and Israel has to defend itself against an existential threat, I am confident we will be there. Nobody wants to get there. I'm also confident that we're going to protect the Straits of Hormuz and that we're going to protect American military personnel and civilians on the ground. I'm confident if there's a war with Iran, they lose. I'm confident it would be very devastating to the region, will not be pretty, don't want to go there. But what more do you expect the president to do? If he sends the Japanese prime minister to try to restart negotiations and they blow up a Japanese tanker, I don't know what Is to tell you. Is the president prepared to act militarily? I'll let you ask him. You, you, I am you. saying if he does not change the course we're on, then others will act. You use strong language. To. You talked to the president this morning. You'll talk to him later. Yeah. Um, do you believe that he believe that he believes what you said that we're one step closer potentially to war today? Than I yesterday? think anybody would believe that we're one step closer. They shot down an American asset, well within international waters, trying to assess the situation. Uh, what are you supposed to do? Just Ronald Reagan took a lot, then he acted. This president's taken a lot from Iran. He was right to get out of a bad deal. He's right to put sanctions on their disruptive behavior throughout the world. He'd like a better deal. To me, it's clear that the Iranians are trying to break us between our allies. They're trying to create chaos to up oil prices. And you can't legitimize this way of negotiating. If we do it with Iran, then the next thing that will happen is that North Korea will explode a bomb, shoot off a missile, thinking that's the way, best way to get America back at the table. And who else is in that meeting this afternoon with the president? Who's in the Middle East and campaign strategy? Well, all I can I tell mean, you, you can if you're not willing to stand up to aggression, you're going to get hurt. So ignoring uh, Al Qaeda and, and Afghanistan was not a very good strategy. This is not an endless war. This is a provocative regime that's dismembered the Mideast, that shoots his own people down in the streets, that threatens the existence of the state of Israel. This is an enemy of mankind, and if you're not willing to take this enemy on, you'll regret it because you're going to put all the pressure on Israel. Here's what I believe about Donald Trump. He's a deal maker. He's trying to avoid conflict, but this is truly a defining moment for him. Who else Senator, who else? When Obama said to Assad, you better not use chemical weapons, Assad did, the rest is history. Trump has told the Iranians, you cannot disrupt navigation of the seas, you can't attack our interests or our allies, that's an unacceptable way to live in the 21st century. They are testing him. They need to do so at their own peril. If they get away with this, God help us with North Korea and throughout the world. I'm convinced that as a last resort, President Trump will stop this behavior. Are you saying that the president is going to monitor enrichment before deciding to take military action? I'm saying that if they increase enrichment standards, that Israel will begin to change their calculation. So 95% is what you need to get to a bomb. The difference between three and a half and 20 is big. From 20 to 95 is like walking across the street. Who else is he in that right meeting today with the president? And yeah, I don't think it's a lack of a sec def problem. I think the problem is we're trying to find a way to deal with a rogue regime who's a expeditionary force for evil. We're being tested. And here's what I do believe. They know that they will lose. Remember, the truth is out there waiting to be found. Wake up. Take the red pill. Join the red pill in for more. Break the matrix. Free your mind.